How's it going, guys? Lynx Forte here. Uh, I participated in the top, uh, the core TCG <laughs> uh, regionals on uh, yesterday, the July 11th, and I got top 32. It came in 26th, and I just wanted to go over my deck profile. Played Imperial Dramon. The tournament itself was such a great experience. Um, I've been playing in these before, and you know, I don't think I've taken these online tournaments as seriously as I did the past couple of weeks. And I think me getting top 32 was kind of like a show of that. Um, I want to shout out all the people first. Shout out Anthony, Sean, Luke, Parker, uh, Angel, Chris, and then everyone at Cool Stuff in Tampa and everyone at uh, House Rules in Kissimmee. Like, there's so many great people, so helpful just to give me advice. Um, like, I, I think being able to play against everyone and test against everyone, get their ideas, helped me understand my deck, understand my matchups. Like I said, I, I took it kind of seriously in the last three weeks or so. Like I've gotten as much testing as, as work allowed, life allowed. Um, so let me just jump into a minute and a half in. Uh, four Demi Vs for the jamming draw and then one Upa. The Upa, let me put this over here because it looks like the light is kind of trying to get in the way. The Upa didn't come up that often. For me, um, even during testing, it came up more in the mirror match. And then it came up uh, in the Mastamon matchup because they hard play a Gatamon. So that's, you know, that was that. Uh, if there was a, I would say a better, if there was a better fifth egg, I would have played it. But, you know, you still want your draw. So... The Upa was the best fifth egg you could get. Uh, I played four of the memory Vmons. I used to play three, and then in the last week or so, I moved it to four. And man, I felt stupid forever playing this card at three because this is probably the best rookie in the deck right now because Pyodramon is able to unsuspend. Ken and Davis allow you to unsuspend. <clears throat> uh, I feel stupid for thinking I needed three. Like, if I could play seven, I would play seven. <laughs> uh, I have three of the starter deck nine Vmon. I don't play the other searcher from BT8 because I prefer this one to get my free Digimon, whereas the other one is only giving you dual color cards, whether it be Digimon or whether it be uh, Tamer's options. I may need to find a Stingmon. I may need to find an XVmon. And a lot of the times that was the case. I needed Stingmon, I needed XVmon. And, you know, I can search for my Rajamon, I can search for my uh, Pyodramon, I can search for my Imperials. So this card still does that. I just can't search for my Tamer, and I can't search for my Option. And a lot of times, I didn't want to search for those. Like, I, I need, I want my Digimon, so that's why I prefer this one. Um, four felt too much for me, so I dropped it down to three. Um, I'm bad at searching. I do not have l good luck when it comes to searching, so that was that. I play two of the jamming Vmon. Um, it's jamming. It's it's a free swing. Um, if you have it on top of your Demi V, it's a free draw. Um, I know some people don't like it. Some people are like, oh, I play it at one or they don't play it at all. But you know what? I want my free swing. There were times where I went to dragon mode. I popped it out to get ready for my next turn. Oh, my next turn. Let me swing with this. Uh, I'll digivolve into a Rydramon or Steamon for two. And then we'll Jogus then. <clears throat> um, I just... It's a free swing. I, I figure why not. I don't. I was playing it at three at one point, um, but I didn't want to see it that often. And then these two, uh, the BT2 Vmon and then the BT, or sorry, the ST8 Vmon, both let you draw. But I feel like this one is better for late game, and then this is better for early game. Early, you know, like probably turn four, maybe five. You probably have 10, 12, 13 cards in hand. So, you know, this one's never going to happen anymore. Um, and then this one, I think it's better for late game because you kind of need your Pyrodramon um, or you need your Ken and Davis so you can unsuspend. Um, if anyone feels different about the early late game situations, you know, we can have that conversation um, and maybe I can be convinced. It, it's just in my practice, that's how I saw it and that's how I felt about it. Uh, and then I play, of course, four XVmon from the EX. And then I play uh, four Stingmon, three Ragermon, and yes, I'm going to say Ragermon. 
and one Magnemon. Card needed. I was playing this at three. Uh, this is your main Digimon you always want to see because it's going to give everything in your in your deck jamming. Pretty much everything in your deck jamming. Um, I was playing this at three at one point, and I did this at four. Only because, you know, this is giving us both colors. That's why I was playing it at four originally. However, over time, I was like, no, no, you really need your draw power. So I went to four Stingmon, and I went to three Lajamon. And then I removed a rookie. I'm playing 13 rookies to add in a Magnemon because the blocker has come up several times in various matchups um even during the tournament it came up in the mirror and it came up during my matchup with rapid hybrid so um and also spoiler i play chimera this gives chimera a fourth color allowing it to minus 4k to the board as well as uh be at 12k when it swings um and then I play four Pyodramon, I play one Dino B, and like I said, one Chimera. This is your main attacker for the deck, in my opinion, because you're going to swing twice. Or, you know, you swing, you can unsuspend, and then you can kind of make life decisions. <laughs> whether you want to swing again, or whether you want to digivolve, um, and, you know, not give your opponent something to swing into. The Dino B, I know some people don't like it, but for me, it came in clutch during the mirror match. Uh, my opponent had a fighter mode on board, unsuspended, and I was like, I don't want to just allow you to swing for game. So I went into Dino B, I suspended it, and um, he wasn't able to suspend next turn. And then I think the following turn I was able to go to Chimera, or maybe that was all in the same turn. Either way, I was able to clear my opponent's um, uh, fighter mode with these two cards. And so I felt like this was good for the mirror match. And to some degree, it may be even good for um, the Mastermon matchup or the Yellow Hybrid matchup because of Ophanimon and Mastermon themselves. Like It gives you, you're basically, if you go into uh, either Imperial, you're swinging for 14 or 15k, depending on which Imperial it is. And so it just allows you to get over those bodies. Um, you're still not dodging um, Wyvern's Breath or anything like that, so... <clears throat> But giving you a 15k body, you miss a lot of Digimon. And, you know, it's even if you don't have jamming, it, it makes you feel a lot safer. Um, speaking of Imperials, play three Dragon Mode, two Fighter Modes. I know some people will say two and two. Um, I want to see this because I want to pop out my Digimon, and that's how I won one of my mirror matches. My um, I had Pyodramon on board. I swung twice to clear the security. Um, my opponent asked me if I had Lobo for game, and I was like, no. But I had four memories, so I went into Dragon Mode. I popped out XBmon and Stingmon, and then I went back in. I Jokers back in, either into, you know, whatever my other level five was in my hand. I think it was another Pyodramon. And then I just swung for game that way. Um, <clears throat> there was one combo that, it, it's a simple combo, but it was one that I loved that I did. Um, I went into Chimera during one of my games to neg 3k to the board. And then I went into fighter mode to bounce his fighter mode back to hand. Like it's a simple play, but it was one that I loved because it needed to happen and it cleared the board if I'm not mistaken. Like I wish I had recorded my games, but I didn't want to deal with it. I just wanted to play. <clears throat> I played two Davis, one Mimi, and then one Davis and Ken. Uh, me and a few of my friends, we call Davis the devil because sometimes we will not hit a single Digimon. And for me, that happens more than not. <laughs> or I will send like two hammer sparks to the bottom or something like that. And so we call him the devil. Um, at one point during testing, I was running two Mimi, one Davis, and I, I wasn't sure which one was correct. Like I saw the value of running two Mimis. But during testing, I also saw where I needed to play another Davis so I could search. Like, whether my luck was going to be good or bad, like, being able to search was being able to search, right? So, <clears throat> I the on Friday, I made that change before I went to House Rules Gaming. And I don't regret it, I, can, I guess I could say. <laughs> um, and then three Davis and Ken... I know some people are saying you only need two. Um, I like three. And 
again, I, I with three, I feel like I'm going to see it in security more than I want. And that means I'm getting one on board. Um, I just don't like the two. I think four is way too many. And I don't think two is enough. So I feel like, at least for me and the way I like to play, three is that sweet spot. So those are the tamers. And then for the options, <clears throat> I play I play four sparks. Um, I know some people are, you know, are cutting it down to three. Um, that's a preference and what they want to do with their Digimon. Um, there were several times during this tournament where I played all four hammer sparks. Or, you know, one came out of security or two came out of security even. I play one hidden potential discover. I feel like this card is really cracked in this deck. And, like, I know green usually abuse this deck. But I feel like it's even worse in this deck because you can swing once with Pyrodramon, unsuspend it, play hidden potential to suspend it, and then go into your dragon mode. If you have Davis and Ken, you suspend it to unsuspend your dragon mode. And then you pop out your two bodies. And then you can still swing with your dragon mode. Or for two, you can go into your fighter mode. And then with the two bodies that you spit out, you can Jogers again. So I feel like this this card abuses this more than green ever did. Um, play one ice wall. I saw a comment somewhere where someone was just like, you know, I took out ice wall because it wasn't doing enough for me. I don't agree or disagree with that card uh, or that comment. It I saw points where I could not use it or, you know, I didn't really care. Like there were times where it was in my hand. I was like, ah, I don't really need to play it. Or there were times it was in my hand and I was like, I should have played it. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. Ice wall is ice wall. And my last two cards are Giga Death, not Mega Death. The reason why, yes, it's an expensive card. It's nine costs versus Mega Death being five costs. However, for the mirror match, people tend to overextend. Um, for what is it? For uh, Mastamon, again, they also overextend, and like they will just swing for the fences. And so this was a very punishing card for a lot of people. Like my second, my technically my first opponent, because my round one opponent didn't show. Um, my second opponent lost because I played this card and got rid of his board. And. It's such a great feeling. Yes, you have to give a lot of memory. Like, I think in that case, I was at two, maybe even one. So I gave him seven or eight. But it was such a punishing play. And I love it for the mirror match. Um, coming out of security, it's not the best feeling. Because it's basically mega death. However, it just bottom decks the card versus sending it back to the hand. So it's a situational card coming out of security. Playing it from your hand, you feel so much better, regardless of giving them the memory. Um, if they, if you give them the memory, they either have it or they don't. And it's basically you're telling them, make your move. If you don't, if you don't have it, you don't win. Um, like me and Anthony always talk about uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh GX when Zane used to say, uh, I can't remember what the card is, but everyone knows Zane. If you've watched Yu-Gi-Oh, you know Zane. It's the card that allows you to fuse uh, your Digimon and it doubles their attack power. And he used to tell his brother, there's a difference between being able to play a card and knowing how to play the card or something like that. And you have to know how to play this card. And, you know, even sometimes I don't know how to play the card. But I only play it when I'm that far behind. And that's basically what this card is. Um, for my overall experience of this tournament, like I said, I came in 26th. I'm like super stoked, which is the reason why I'm making this video after leaving my channel hi on hiatus for like three years. <clears throat> but um, I'm super stoked. I'm happy with the performance. My matchups today were my round one opponent didn't show. He messaged me like five minutes before and was just like, hey, I'm still out eating. Uh, you get the round one. I was like, I, I want to get the jitters out, man. <laughs> um, my round two was an Imperial um, mirror match. That was the first time I played Giga. Uh, I played Giga Death and my opponent was just like surprised by it. Uh, round three was another Imperial Round four was Lilithmon Creepy Loop, which really interesting deck. I've heard about it, but that was the first time I had actually seen it. 
Uh, round five was Rapid Hybrid. Such a fun matchup. It was the worst. Like during my testing, it was my worst matchup. I, I was I probably had like a 30% win rate. Not that I didn't know how to beat it. It was just like the way the cards would align. I wouldn't always have what I needed early enough. Um, I ended up decking out in, in overtime. So I was like, I knew I couldn't win. So I just decked out just because. Um, round six was another Imperial that I won. So up to the round six, I was three and zero against Imperial. And then round seven, I, round seven, I played my fourth Imperial matchup. And that was the one I lost. I had four Pyro Dramons in my starting hand uh, in the first game. So I was like, yeah, I kind of wanted to just say, you know what, let's go to game two because of that. But I tried to play it out as best as I could. And then my round eight, which was the last round, was against Blue Hybrid. And I won that one, allowing me to go six and two. I was on the fence about whether or not I wanted to play another round because at six and two, I could bubble out of top 32. Um, if we played another round, it kind of depended on whether I won or lost. Like if I won, there was a potential for me to go to top 16 and get my regional invite. But, you know, ha if I would have lost, I might have bubbled out of, I think I would have bubbled out of top 64 because I would have been X3 at that point. So I was content had the tournament with the tournament ending, not knowing um, where I was placed at that point because I was six and two. Um, but that's it. Um, yeah, for people who were around years ago, the Pokemon videos are done. I don't have that passion for the, the games anymore that I did. Um, I'm loving Digimon for the moment. I'm not saying I'm going to be playing this forever. I'm just loving it for the moment. Um, with that, I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm hoping I can start. I have the I have the equipment, so I'm hoping I can get some locals matches in and start doing those. Or, you know, I can do some more webcam videos if I ever stop being lazy and get that set up properly. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. This is Link's Forte. Uh, see you around. Peace.